you know, you think this is a normal pullover. It doesn't even have any symbols on it, you, you might think. But, you know, something always tells me, you know, I always see these symbols, you know, everywhere. Look at this here. Look at, that's the downward, one of those triangles from Auschwitz, you know, the concentration camps. And it doesn't have a meaning, you know, to reinforce the, uh, the pullover or something. No, not at all. You know, they have it like, you know, there's nothing at the back, you know. Or, it's, it's not to reinforce it, you see. There it is. You see? So here's the inside of it. Yeah. So you see just the uh, where it was uh, sewn. So I say it's really sewn onto it, you know. Uh, I guess nobody sees this, and the guy who was wearing this, you see, it's like uh, it's sewn onto it, you see. No. They took the um, all the effort to to sew it onto it, you know. So it, it's important to them. The uh, inverse triangle of death. And by whom is it? It's by Levi's. You know? Levi's Strauss. Well, that's a jaywalker name, isn't it? So I see here the jaywalkers. And here is the, the concentration camp, the pyramid, Pharaoh's Pyramid of Death. The inverse pyramid. So here it says where it was made in Vietnam and this might also be related with the downward uh, triangle which I'm going to show you in a minute and made in Vietnam you know they do, there's a lot of child work child workers you know child labor and just, just like in the concentration well, there were no children in the concentration camps or they murdered them quickly I mean, no labor so much by children. And um, because the Nazis, they saw them as use, useless eaters. And um, so child labor, you know, or at least forced labor. I mean, and that what was going on in the concentration camps. It was all about forced labor. So I see it all gathered together, you know. Here, the symbol of the forced labor made in Vietnam and the jaywalkers. So there are three items, you know, and the whole thing is in blue for the, uh, the war color of Pharaoh. Their war against humanity. So there are too many ingredients here just to, you know, not interconnect them like, you know. So now I'm going to show you what the um, the inverse the blue inverse triangle of Auschwitz, what it means. So here you can see it in German, where we can see all the inverse pyramids of death, which the concentration camp inmates had to wear on their chest. On top we can see red for the political prisoners which Homie Ross would have gotten, as he was a political prisoner in Switzerland, the base of the Nazi Templars. And here, right here, we see the blue inversed pyramid of death, which says emigrant with an E, which today we would call an immigrant with an I which is quite peculiar, as today's Muslim immigrants are called immigrants with an I. An immigrant with an I is someone coming into a country, whereas an emigrant with an E 
is someone leaving the country. So here you see on the pullover exactly this blue inverse pyramid, as you can see here, which the, uh, the inmates in the concentration camps had to wear. And you see it here on uh, Levi Strauss. It has no function whatsoever, you know, for to reinforce it. It's absolutely this here. And here in English, so here on top here, it says foreign forced laborers in Germany wearing the inverse blue triangle like many French forced laborers in Germany kidnapped by the Nazis after France lost the war in 1940. Or Vietnamese forced child laborers sewing their blue forced labor patch on a Levi's pullover. You almost don't want to wear any more clothes and you better walk around naked because everywhere there's something. Well, here it says the contribution of whole catch refugees at Levi Strauss. So if you punch this phrase into the search bar, you'll find the whole article where you can read it. And due to the censorship, I'm not allowed to pronounce this word here. So this word here with the H. Otherwise, my video will get deleted immediately. So I say for the forbidden H word, hole catch, as they caught them and put them in a hole. Also, concerning the word J people, the censorship won't allow me to call them by their name, so I call them jaywalkers. And I have nothing against these people. Only the censorship they inflict upon the world is quite annoying. So here at Levi Strauss, you see in fact those refugees, emigrants, who can be pictured with an inverse blue triangle as their political status as at Levi Strauss here defines. So maybe this is how the blue Auschwitz triangle got onto the Levi's pullover. But even more likely, it's a cruel joke by the jaywalker nobility towards their jaywalker slaves who escaped the Nazis emigrating to America. So here you see a list of European jaywalker nobility. And here you go, they have coat of arms. It's real nobility. You know, all peoples in the world, they have a nobility. Also the jaywalkers. And the normal, simple jaywalkers, you know, they're the slaves of the jaywalker nobility. Just as the Germans are the slaves of the German nobility, or the French of the French nobility. So here it says German, here. And look, there is also Strauss, like Levi Strauss. It's part of the nobility. And in the Hungarian Jaywalker nobility, they're even called Adolf. Can you believe that? I mean, wasn't Adolf the guy who murdered the jaywalkers? I mean, what's going on here? Right? So, there's quite a lot. You know? I mean, if you hear uh, Lord uh, Rothschild, Rothschild talking, well, he talks like, like, 
King Charles, you know, he doesn't talk like Netanyahu or something. It's a completely different way of talking, you know. Just listen to it, you know, just look around and open up your eyes and your ears. You know, Lord Rothschild, he talks like King Charles, you know, the ex. He's talking, you know, like this, I'm Lord Rothschild, you know. Oh dear, it's a jolly girl, you know. He doesn't talk like, you know, like Prime Minister Netanyahu, does he? No, he doesn't. You know, it's the nobility, you know, there's a difference, you know. Of course, a huge enterprise like Levi Strauss is of Pharaoh's nobility. Otherwise, they couldn't have kept their company, nor could it have developed into an industrial multinational giant, as it obviously has. So, here is the hierarchical um, setup of Pharaoh, you know. This is us, the concept of four, the slaves. And the hierarchy is this, the concept of three. There are three sides in a pyramid, or, and the ground, it's like a square, so it's the concept of four, you know. And here's Pharaoh on top, and here there are two types of nobility, you know, like in Europe. There's the higher nobility, this one, and there's the lower nobility, these ones here. It's the same. You know? And this one here, the vizier, that's where the name, etymologically, the name a viscount, where it comes from. You know? I mean, what does it mean, a viscount? Yeah, count we know by now, but what is this vi stuff here? It's the same as a vice president, you know. And in German, you write it like this, a vice president, like V-I-Z, you know, vice president. This one, the C is a Z, a Z in uh, American English, in British English, a Z. So all of this, so this is the president, and here, the vizier, it's the vice president. You know, it's, it's, we're being ruled by Pharaoh, believe it now, people. And there's also a Jay Walker nobility, like these ones here with their inverse pyramids. I mean, why did they put it on here? I, and in fact, there's a Levi branch of the Jay Walker nobility as Baron Levi here. And here it says, the Lord Levi. And he's in plenty of jaywalker activities with his jaywalker slaves, as you can read here. So here it says, the Baron Levi, like Levi Strauss, you know, the, uh, the garments. It says, the Lord Levi. And here's in a lot of jaywalker activities with the slaves, you know, to do some goodwill stuff, you know. And he's a long-standing friend of former Prime Minister Tony Blair. Oh, that's not very good, eh? Look at them. So, remember the um, the pyramid, you know, I just showed you before. You know. So, here it says here in German, I can't pronounce the word, but it says J. Walker Nobility, and there's a long list. So this is a long list of German Jay Walker nobility and a certain Clara von Strauss who got terminated in the Zobibor extermination camp in 1943. Now, why would Pharaoh's nobility exterminate Pharaoh's nobility? You would ask yourselves. And I'll answer that question in a minute. So here's the long list. You can read it yourself. You see, it's, it's all Jay Walker nobility. It's a very long list. Well, you can punch it in there yourself. There's something I wanted to show you. If you punch that in German, what I showed you before, you know, then you can uh, you can read the whole list for yourself. 
So here it says uh, Strauss Clara Afon, and she was born in in the Hague apparently, and she lived in Frankfurt. Oh no! And then she emigrated to the Netherlands you know, because of the Nazis, of course. And she was caught, and she died 1943 in Zobibor. And the list goes on. So here we are only at uh, S. So why would Pharaoh's nobility exterminate Pharaoh's nobility? I'll answer that for you. Well, when the J runners ran away from the Romans in the JJ base, thus performing the diaspora, the local JJ base nobility found themselves without their slaves. And what can an aristocrat do without his slaves? He's certainly not going to work himself. So here it says, a king without a people. And you see the in, on a chess, a chess piece representing the king, standing all by himself on a Freemason checkerboard, you might say. So the Jaywalker nobility ran after their slaves, also taking the diaspora, and finally ending up in Germany where it gave severe frictions with the German nobility, who didn't want to share their land and power with the newcomers of the Jaywalker nobility. In spite of the fact that both the German nobility and the Jaywalker nobility come out of Pharaoh's nobility, and are in fact brothers and sisters with each other. Nevertheless, a huge internal war within Pharaoh's nobility started, leading to two world wars where the German nobility did a final solution, exterminating both the Jaywalker nobility and their Jaywalker slaves. So here you see Emperor William II with the SS symbol, the Totenkopf symbol here on his thing long before the SS even existed. So that says it all, doesn't it? And in order to have the Germans fight for the German nobility, the whole Germanic propaganda was invented making the Germans believe that they were fighting for Germany, where in fact the Germans were sacrificing themselves for the German nobility. Look, it even says here S, S, one S like here, and one S like here, and long before the SS even existed. This picture was taken long before. So Pharaoh's nobility are so good in lying and the dumb slaves believe it. The Germans believe to be Germanic super warriors and the jaywalkers believe to be God's chosen people, which are all tricks by Pharaoh's nobility in order to unify certain peoples, whether jaywalkers or Germans, at certain times, in order to mold them into some identitarian form with a certain pharaonic goal. We are all slaves of Pharaoh, and all peoples of this world have to obey Pharaoh's nobility, who love it to rub their hidden symbols into our faces, which probably just makes them feel good and invincible. Let's just call it pharaonic graffiti.